If you've ever seen The Matrix or played a game like The Sims, you're familiar with the idea of simulated realities. Humanity as a species has always been interested in the idea that maybe everything is not as it seems. Perhaps reality is an illusion. Or, in more recent years, perhaps we're living in some super advanced computer simulation. But if what we can see and experience is all we know, how could we possibly determine whether or not our reality is real? Could we actually be living in a simulation? And if so, what does that mean for humanity? If we look back to 1972 and the release of Pong, then compare it to something like Battlefield 1 today, we can see just how far computing technology has come in the past 45 years. The amazing thing about computing power is that it doesn't grow in a linear fashion. It grows exponentially, doubling roughly every two years. This trend is called Moore's Law. Moore's Law has caused many to speculate just how advanced computers can get. As we get closer and closer to photorealistic video games and virtual reality, the ability to make more immersive simulations will come with it. The rapid growth of computing power and efficiency has sparked the question, what if there are advanced civilizations with computers powerful enough to simulate the entire universe, all the way down to the molecular level? Sufficiently advanced computers could program their sims to feel like they're conscious, generate false memories, emotions, and sensory data. In short, the sims would be aware of their own existence, but completely oblivious to the fact that their reality isn't real at all. The idea of digital realities is the basis for what's called the simulation argument. The simulation argument, brainchild of philosopher Nick Bostrom, suggests that in the future, post-human, technologically mature civilizations will have enormous computing power, and would have the ability to run what he calls ancestor simulations, meaning high-fidelity simulations of human life that would be indistinguishable from reality to the simulated ancestors. The argument proposes that one of three possibilities must be true. Option 1. Civilizations that have potential to become capable of running ancestor simulations go extinct before they reach that point. Option 2. Civilizations that have reached technological maturity and could run ancestor simulations have no desire to do so. Or, option three, almost all existing civilizations with human-level experience are living in a simulation. Okay, that all sounds a bit strange. Let's start from the beginning. Option one suggests that running ancestor simulations could be possible, but some calamitous event prevents any civilization from reaching that point. This event could be an asteroid impact, nuclear fallout, or more likely, since we're talking about the far future, disaster caused by some new technology, such as self-replicating nanobots. Now, if so much as one civilization reaches technological maturity, we can rule out option one as a possibility, leaving only options two and three. So, say the technology to run these simulations is widely available to advanced civilizations. Option two suggests that these civilizations might choose not to run them. The most likely explanation for such a choice is for ethical reasons. If they can simulate emotions and sensations, then that means their sims could experience pain and suffering. If, however, even one civilization chooses to run a simulation, then we can rule out option two as a possibility. That leaves us with only option three, or what's commonly referred to as the simulation hypothesis. If a post-human civilization can run one of these massive simulations, then it stands to reason that they could run several, or hundreds, even thousands. If multiple civilizations did it, the simulated realities could number in the millions or more. With that number of simulated realities, it would suggest that our own reality is more likely to be a simulation rather than an original civilization on its way to technological maturity. Okay, that's an interesting thought, but it sounds pretty crazy, right? Surely no one actually believes we're living in a computer world. Well, that's not exactly the case. Nick Bostrom believes that there is a significant chance, somewhere between 20 and 50%, that we do indeed live in a simulated reality. Elon Musk, one of the most visionary entrepreneurs of future technology, is almost certain that we're just programs. But how do we know for sure? You're probably familiar with Plato's Allegory of the Cave, which describes a scene not entirely dissimilar to a simulated reality. In the story, people have been chained to a rock in a cave their whole lives. All they can see is a rock wall straight in front of them. Behind them, figures pass in front of a fire, casting shadows on the wall. These shadows are the prisoner's reality. It's all they can see, so it's all they know. If we've grown up in a simulated reality, and everything around us is false, but it's all we know, there's really no way to discern whether our reality is true. But for the sake of argument, let's assume that one lone sim figured out that the world around him was a simulation. What would happen? Well, if you've ever played a modern video game, you probably already know the answer. The architects of this simulation would just load a previous save and make sure the sim doesn't have that moment of realization again. Okay, say we do live in a simulated reality, how would that affect the world around us? Well, if we think of our entire universe running on a computer, we would understand that it requires an enormous amount of computing power. So, to save on RAM, or whatever the future equivalent is, the architects could have high-fidelity and low-fidelity portions of our simulated universe. 
So if we were aware that we lived in a simulation, any self-interested sim should strive to be noteworthy or risk being relegated to a low memory or non-conscious portion of the simulation. Things get really interesting when we consider the nature of the universe itself. If you've ever tried running a graphics-intensive game on an old computer, you know that it becomes choppy or slow because the computer can't keep up. Now, think about a black hole, an object with incalculable mass and gravity, spinning at tremendous speed. And what happens in the vicinity of such massive objects? Time slows down. General relativity itself operates in a manner that mimics a computer trying to economize on memory usage. Then you can consider what would happen if hundreds of years down the line, in our simulated reality, humans develop the technology to create their own simulated universe. At that point, the strain on the original architect's computer could prove too much and crash our entire reality. Or that could be the end game. The architects could just be letting our simulation play out to see how their ancestors developed the necessary technology to run such advanced simulations. As our own technology becomes more and more sophisticated, we march toward an inevitable moment of life or death. When we finish the machine capable of running an ancestor simulation, we're one flick of a switch from narrowing down the three options of the simulation argument to two. When we launch the simulation, the world could keep spinning, or game over. In the end, the simulation argument depends upon the computational theory of the mind, which proposes that consciousness is simply natural information processing. If it is, then the human brain can be simulated by a computer or artificial intelligence. If it's something more, then a computer may never be able to simulate human consciousness, no matter how advanced. It's all very fascinating to think about, and while many people claim to have seen a glitch in the matrix, as they're often called, it's impossible to discern for sure whether our reality is original with our current level of technology. But just in case, go do something interesting so you don't get deleted. If you'd like to learn more about the simulation argument and other ideas, check out the links in the description. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and follow Second Thought on your favorite social media. Do we live in a simulation? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, click here to watch my video on artificial intelligence, or click here to watch all my videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.